Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Before we go on, let's check in with our friend John Baptiste. Hello, John. I like hey. the lighting. I like your mood lighting. <laughs> yeah, you know I had to judge it up in here, get, get a vibe going. Mm -hmm. How was your Mother's Day? You know, it, it, it was good, but um, I, I found out about the young man who was um, murdered jogging, Ahmaud Arbery, and um, I was thinking about his mother. And mm -hmm. um, it, it just, it, it, it was a lot to, um, to process, I'll say. Yes, it was, it was heartbreaking not only to see, but to know that that video had existed for months without any action being taken. And it's not that that video existed, it's that the people had to take action to get authorities to take action. Yeah, that, that's the part about it that um, is really troubling to me because who knows how many times that has happened and someone may have gotten away with it. So um, we just have to really, really hold ourselves to a higher standard. Thank you, John. Joining me now is the anchor of the lead and State of the Union on CNN. Please welcome Jake Tapper. Hello, Jake. Hey, Stephen. How are you? Oh, just fantastic. How are you? <laughs> it's great. It's great. I, I love never leaving my house. I love going back to the little house on the prairie kind of experience when it comes to raising our kids. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll go into town and Go to the feed store. Ma and Pa and I. <laughs> or we order from the Sears Roebuck catalog. Mm-hmm. That's who that's gonna get pretty spicy. The lingerie section <laughs> can get pretty racy in the Sears Roebuck catalog. Jake, you've said on your show, we're running out of words to describe this era. What words are left? Yeah. Uh, none that we can say on network television. I don't think. Although I think you've tried. Come on, you're on cable. You can do what you want. I uh, try to keep it uh, classy. I try to keep the joint somewhat classy. I mean, it's just bizarre. I mean, it, it's, it's uh, in a way, dystopian. In a way, um, I mean, literally, President Trump today came out to talk about how the United States is ready to reopen, and he... I mean, they can't even keep the pandemic out of the White House, literally. Two officials tested positive there. Uh, three top health officials are self-isolating. Uh, Drs. Fauci, Redfield, and Hahn of the CDC, uh, FDA, and, and uh, Dr. Fauci, of course, you know. Uh, and, um, I mean, it's, it's not funny. It, it's dark. Uh, but, I mean, it's almost as if Sometimes the president doesn't understand that we can see and hear what's going on. I mean, he said today that, that uh, they had achieved this greatness with, with testing. And then somebody said, one of the reporters said, that, you know, you're doing surveillance testing and contact tracing at the White House, which is great. When will the American people have access to that same kind of testing? Which is a question I've been asking now for weeks. And the president just turned it into a grievance. Oh, if I didn't, if we didn't have good testing, then you'd be attacking me for, for not having good testing. Again, no answer to the question. No answer to the question. What, do you think there's any reason to believe that it's only those three people in the White House? Because so far it's been the president's valet. It's been a spokeswoman for Mike Pence. And I believe Ivanka Trump's assistant has been tested positive. But... Why, why wouldn't it be more people than that? Why would they tell us the truth? Well, that's one. I mean, this is a White House that established its affinity for the truth early on with crowd sizes and the inauguration. But beyond that, I mean, uh, looking at the serious medical condition of this and, and uh, the situation in terms of how incredibly easily spread this virus is, um, it's very possible that more people have it in the White House. And, you know, look, I, I don't say that lightly. I don't wish this on anyone uh, I, at all, anywhere. Um, but, I, I mean, I asked Sanjay Gupta that today on my show. I said, what, I mean, what are the odds that, that it's only these two people? And I think um, Ivanka's assistant was in a, I think she was in a different area. I don't think she was at the White House. But these two were at the White okay. House. Uh, and, and Sanjay said, 
it's very likely that there are others who have been infected. And in fact, just today, the White House sent out a memo to staffers to saying that they had to wear masks when they enter the property, which is odd, too, because the CDC, the CDC told the rest of us uh, a month ago that we needed to wear masks. Um, so I don't know, I, I, although there is this idea that President Trump might, might think that people who wear masks are displaying weakness or something. There is, that's been suggested about why people don't do it at the White House. But it's very, it's very disconcerting, and it's, it, I, I am at a loss for words uh, quite often covering this. Uh, you've, you've talked on air to a White House aide to ask the president to uh, talk to him about invoking the Defense Production Act for the manufacturing of tests, among other things. And you've asked members of the GOP to talk to the president to take the science seriously. Is that the role of journalists now, to encourage people close to the president to take action or to take certain aspects of the research about this seriously? Do you feel like that's your role? Um, it's a good question, because obviously, you know, I don't feel comfortable advocating for policies when it comes to taxes or energy or, you know, involvement in, in foreign wars. You know, that's not my job. But I do think that there is something to be said about the fact that when, I, when you are a conduit of information, as I am, and you talk to health experts and they say, this is what we need to be doing, you know, surveillance testing, uh, which is testing a few people so as to infer what the spread of the virus is within a population. You don't have to test, for instance, all 330 million Americans, but you can test a representative sample in different parts of the country and get an idea uh, as long as you're testing enough people. That's surveillance testing. And then there's contact tracing. Somebody tests positive and you do some detective work to figure out who that person has been in touch with. This is what experts say is needed. This is what experts are doing at the White House to say, I'm hearing from governors and from health experts, we need to be doing this. Why are we not doing this? The Defense Production Act, it's just a question of the reason we don't have enough swabs, the reason we don't have enough reagents which hold the samples after somebody's been tested, the reason we don't have enough lab equipment is because we're in a free market economy and there are, you know, companies aren't going to manufacture reagents out of the goodness of their heart. Most of them aren't anyway. So the, the, the United States needs to, the government needs to force them. And governors don't have the power to invoke the Defense Production Act. Only the president does. They have invoked it a few times for a few things, ventilators. And I think there was um, one swab manufacturer, uh, in, I think in Maine, where the DPA was invoked. But generally speaking, we're not doing it. So I have said to, um, to the White House aide, uh, Kevin Hassett, the White House senior advisor, you know, I'm hearing from governors this, this is what they need. And I did say on air one time, and this was after President Trump had mused publicly about the wisdom of injecting disinfectants into the human body, I said that Republican leaders need to take action because things are getting dangerous. President Trump has said things that made things more dangerous for people, just empirically, just as a fact. Downplaying this virus mm -hmm. in all of February and half of March. It wasn't just him, by the way. There were others doing it, too. Mayor de Blasio, Governor Cuomo. I mean, there were plenty of people doing it. But doing that gave a false sense of security to a lot of people. And who knows what that meant, ultimately. Jake, we have to take a little bit of a break, but if everybody will stick around, we'll be right back with more Jake Tapper.